Hi, and welcome to Dave Bar the Guitar on this snowy, cold day in South London in the UK. <laughs> Les Paul um, guitar. I don't know what year. It's not vintage. It's fairly recent. It's been um, relicked a bit. Because uh, some people like that, I suppose. Yeah, so the, the paintwork's been taken off the back of the neck and stuff like that. Anyway, um, the reason why I'm doing this video is. Um, because, uh, because of the, the it's it, it's kind of like to me this is a unique guitar. I mean, look at this. Uh, it's got some P90 size humbuckers in, which sound okay. Oh. Anyway, it's <laughs> it's got um, flat wound strings on it. Um, I, I've never played a guitar with flat wound strings on it before. <laughs> And it's wound so tight, these strings are so heavy, I can't hardly play it because um, lack of gigs, I think, is, is you lose the strength from your fingers. Even though I play every day, I can't pull these strings. <laughs> Guitar though, so uh, I'm intrigued as to why um, um, we're going to do these upgrades. Anyway, interestingly enough, what upgrades are we going to do on this guitar? Check this out. This is what we're going to do. The upgrades. Hang on, let me just turn everything off and stuff. Box where it is. Here it is. Ah, right, box of goodies. So we're going to change. I'm going to change for my customer, because it's my customer guitar. We're going to change the uh, the Grover tuners for Grover tuners. Now uh, these ones, these ones are locking tuners. Uh, gold. To go with the rest of the gold hardware, I suppose. Except these are going to look much newer and shinier than the Reddit gold hardware that's on the guitar, which is yeah, okay. So uh, next thing, uh, we're also going to change uh, the saddles. To string saver saddles. Now uh, I've got uh, string saver saddles on my Les Paul. Uh, I can vouch for them. They're very, it's a very good upgrade. Um, obviously, lots of people, you know, say lots of things about these, like you know, uh, about how they affect the tone and burn, all that kind of stuff. Well, they do affect the tone. I mean, there's no doubt about that. They do affect the tone, but they affect the tone for the better. In, in, in to my ears, anyway. So that's that. Uh, what else are we going to Ah, here we go, right? Uh, so, um, uh, these are uh, bare knuckle pickups. What pickups have we put in? Bare knuckle pickups, right? And, uh, what pickups are these? Do you know the funny thing about uh, um, bare knuckle? I noticed, I mean, I noticed this about bare knuckle. I mean, they do some, they, they are fabulous looking. Look at, look at that. That's... That's some fabulous craftsmanship there. What a lovely looking thing that is. The thing I note, I, I always notice about bare knuckle pickups is that they never tell you on the pickup what pickup it is. This pickup is a, what is it? Do you know what? I don't even know, what, what pickup is this? Oh, hang on, this is here. This is six string, bridge, standard spacing, four conductor, short leg, raw nickel, because you know raw nickel. You just can't beat raw nickel. If you want a covered pickup, 
Raw Nichols away you go. Ah, and is it burnt? Still don't know what what it is. Still don't know what it is. Then I've got pickups. Blah blah blah. Still don't know what it is. Ah, it. Okay, I just worked out what it is. On the back it says it's a nail bomb. Now, any of you heard of these before? Uh, they used to use these a lot in uh, in Ireland and in London. Their favoured choice of uh, explosive. But however, this is <laughs> this this is um, this is an L bomb pickup by uh, yeah. This is a nail bomb pickup. Uh, let me turn my glasses off because I look. No, I'll keep them on. No, I'll take them off. This this is a nail bomb pickup uh, by those lovely people at Bare Knuckle. Be interested to see what it sounds like. Um, I wonder what it's made of. Got a few scratches on it, so I'm not sure if this is uh, uh, a brand new one or not. Uh, it's got no plastic cover on, so I'm assuming it's second hand or my customer has taken it out of the box and dropped it or inadvertently scratched it. But that is scratch. However, nil desperandum, because this is a raw nickel pickup cover and um, a good couple of months of, um, of sweaty guitar playing and this will look like it's 30 years old. So, no worries there. So, we've all had a bit... Oh, we've got some more things in the box. These are some Shaler uh, locking um, guitar strap things. Um, I use these. Do you know what? I used to use these all the time, and for some reason, I'm sort of going off them. I don't know why that is. Um, my last two guitars I've got, I just didn't bother putting them on. Um, I don't know why. But anyway, but obviously, on a Les Paul, it's probably a good idea to have something like this. Uh, you don't want to drop that. So um, yeah, so that's it. Um, and some strings we got to put on. We're going to put on some of these. Uh, the Adria, the Ad, the, 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 I can never pronounce it for some reason. I can't say what the word is. Probably because my brain doesn't, you know, does doesn't work in that way. Diadario, Diadario, I can't say the word. But anyway, these are not British strings. I don't know why people don't. People in my country, in the UK, we got some great strings, and they're made by they're made by these guys. They're made by uh, Rota Sound. And they've been making great strings since the beginning of real heavy rock. Um, and um, so I don't know why they use these. I don't know. I don't know. I've tried. I, you know, I'm not saying my customer's wrong. I mean, uh, customer's always right. They can use what I want. But, you know, we've got some uh, British built pickup. We should have some British strings. And these aren't British strings. Anyway, no worries. That's just my little thoughts. I'm going to share my thoughts with you, here, whether you like my thoughts or not. That's the way it is. Anyway, so we're going to um, update this guitar. You've heard what it sounds like. I mean, I could play... You know, some guys, they play the guitar for about 20 minutes. But, you know, generally you can hear a guitar, you know, in the first couple of minutes, what it's going to sound like. Anyway, uh, the only difference is that the guitar had flat uh, wound strings on it. On it. Yeah, flat wound strings on it. So, obviously, the sound's going to change. But I was quite impressed with those um, P90 pickups. Um... I quite like them. I wonder who made them. We'll find out when I take them off. I'll do the video and I'll show you who makes them and uh, all that kind of stuff. And we'll try and find out a little bit more information about them and uh, about the guitar as we go in. I did notice when I took this... Um, if my customer's watching, I did notice that when I took this spare knuckle out of the box, um, this one um, retaining screw, which is for the... Uh, for this um, pickup uh, is, is in there so um, I, I don't know what's happened to the others uh, there are no others in here so um, oh there's some loose in the box maybe all is not lost well anyway so um, let's crack on with um, ripping them strings off and start changing things out swapping stuff out I'll video it for you to see if you're bored, you can just go to the end of the video and listen to how it sounds with the new pickup in. Uh, so there we go. Let's crack on. Yes, we shall start by by whipping the strings off. 
Um, usually I just loosen them and then, then cut them. But um, I'm going to save these strings. I don't know why. They intrigue me. Flat wounds. Obviously I've seen them on, on bass guitars. Um, but not really. Uh, never ever played one on a on a, on a six string guitar before. Very odd. Mind you, you learn new things every day and you experience new things every day. So anyway, I'm gonna whip these off, these strings off. Um, I'm gonna open up the back cavity, have a look at the wiring and pull this, uh, pull this uh, pickup off and we'll have a look together at what pickup this is and find out who makes them, where they're from and perhaps some history or whatever it is not history, what am I thinking? You know, the ethos behind making these pickups. Again, I, I quite like the sound of these pickups. They're quite nice sounding pickups. Um, be interesting to find out who makes them. Yeah, so, uh, so the bridge is, is a locking system of some kind, which I don't know why I haven't come across it before. I just haven't. Why haven't I come across this before? I don't know. Faber, Germany. Again, um, it doesn't feel that light. Um, Germany is well known for its um, superior... Um, Guitar parts, uh, is that you know, for, for, for some guitars anyway. Um, yeah, uh, I don't know. Um, it's a locking system to lock it down. Mm, you know, I wouldn't say it's overkill, um, but you know, that's fine. But this, this, <laughs> I come back to this. This is this is, I've got, I'm gonna have to check this out because I'm pretty sure. That's just, uh, I don't know if that, that does, just doesn't seem right to me. I mean, it fits in and all that, but maybe that's how it's supposed to be. Yep, okay, weird. I got to the bottom of the um, locking studs. Um, on the guitar, the studs don't they, they don't have a locking nut. They're just a just a stud, and somebody's put in some kind of washer thing in order to sort of I don't know hold it steady. So I don't I, I don't know what's happened to the to the nuts that have gone missing. I mean I'll, I'll probably try and find some if I can, but I don't think I've got anything like that. But I'll have a look probably quite difficult to find but anyway that's 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 the reason why that is I'm glad we got to the bottom of that because I was, it was quite concerned anyway so <laughs> I got the cavity open and uh, the first thing that that meets my eye is this insulation tape which is uh, which is used in um, To mess well wow, this, this is this is a uh, uh, what we call this is like an earth tape uh, electricians use this tape um, so although this is an, uh, this is electrical uh, electrical tape isn't the thing I would use to do whatever it is they've done here um, so yeah I'm not sure what that is anyway we'll get to the bottom of that in a minute uh, oh, hang on, what's this? This is, uh, what is, what is this? Okay. Um, and again here. Um, okay. Oh, we've also got um, 
the treble bleed as well. I'm an idiot. So that's a Gibson pickup. It's it's P ninety four R, right? Now I've heard what P ninety four R sounds like. This didn't sound like a P ninety four R to me. This didn't sound anything like it. Maybe the uh, flat wound strings kind of threw me a curveball or something. I don't know. Anyway, there you go. It's a it's a Gibson P ninety four R. I usually see them with the black tops, not with this sort of cream top. Um, yeah, it shows you what I know, doesn't it? But there you go, this is coming out. <coughs> and we're going to stick that uh, bare knuckle in in its place. Look at that, what I just found. I really hate it when it happens. I just looked at the, the first video I did of this, uh, of this guitar. I could see that it was cracked. I didn't notice it before. That's annoying. Anyway, I'm going to super glue that, I think. It's going to sit with me okay. It's not completely snapped, it's just cracked just there like that. I had a feeling that this um, pickup surround was going to give me trouble as soon as I found that break there. I super glued it and every time you tighten it down it snaps because this carve is just so steep. Here, down here you can just feel it. I mean look at this. So... That's a thick piece of uh, plastic to try and bend that much. So, I'm going to put this thinner one on instead. It's the only way out of it. Hey, look, this one's broken too. Wow. This is a disaster. Pickup surround disaster. What's happened to these pickup surrounds? Perhaps they aren't the original ones or. I will replace that one too. I got a second hand one here too. Look at the arch on that. Just about get a pickup in there before it splits. A pickup surround, sorry, before it splits. Yeah. Before I um sold of this sold this pickup here uh, I'm going to tidy this up because this, this is a bit of a mess it actually doesn't need to be that long so why is that that long why is it that that long it doesn't need to be that long that kind of does that one does what does it yep yeah so I don't know what happened there Anywho, I shall get that repaired. Okay, that's much more tidy, right? It's much better. Much better. So we didn't need didn't need that, that wire. We didn't need any of this. We didn't need that. We didn't need all that. We didn't need that. We didn't need that. So yeah, we didn't need any of that. Nice and tidy. Hmm, next job is to get them on there. What could go wrong? Nothing could go wrong. Surely this is going to be far simpler than what we've done so far. We shall see. So the keen eye people among you will see that there is a retaining clip here, here and here and here. Well, which is simple enough. It's to just get your little pointy tool. And you just ease them out. Word of warning now. Because they go ping. Across your workshop if you're not careful. So wish me luck. Well. I'll take it back. These spring clips. When you pull them. They just, they just buckle and bend. Uh, so Faber Germany. You know I said good engineering. I'm going to take that back. Because it's not. This is poor engineering. This is a spring clip. That's how it's supposed to be when you extract it. Because it's supposed to be the metal's supposed to be springy, but it's not. It's just it's just like monkey metal. You just stretch when you pull them. That's supposed to have a spring to it. So I'm gonna have to get some of these from somewhere before I can continue the job. Which is a massive pain in the arse. 
Okie dokie. So, for the record, um, these string saver saddles do not fit this saddle. Um, probably because this is a Fa Faber Germany saddle and not a standard Gibson uh, ABR1 or similar um, tunematic style uh, bridge. That's probably why it doesn't fit. These do not fit. Um, it's, they're, they're, it's close, but not I, I'm not going to risk it. So all that fucking about so far to try and change these has been in vain. Anyway, I got some more of these little E-clips on order. Um, and I, what I found out from my little searching on the internet is that these are just like steel, mild steel, which is, which is crap. So I've ordered some stainless steel ones. So we'll see how we get one out. So yeah, complete waste of time that was. Never mind. So um, these are still quite safely in their packaging. Well, I put them back in their packaging. Uh, none of the packages be ruined, so you should be able to. Uh, customers should be able to send them back for a refund. Uh, hopefully. Okay, time to attack the uh, the tuners. I can't see any problems here. Uh, we're just putting the same type of tuners on, so I can't see any problems here. So I'll loosen them up, unscrew them, unless we got damage to the screw holes or something like that uh, but I think we'll be all right we'll see we'll see okay anybody who's uh, watched my channel will understand my gripe with Grovers these Grovers were bought the Grovers that we're putting in were bought uh, from a European outlet the originals were from uh, on a US made Gibson Les Paul guitar, right? So without going into too much detail, I'm just going to make, I'm just going to keep it really simple, right? I'm just going to weigh the bag of bits. US Grovers, 20, 23 um, grams. European Grovers, 18 grams. Well, you know, um, and, and I can go on. I can, I mean, I mean, I mean th these will actually weigh the same. That's that's actually 41. That's 42. Let's weigh that again and put it in the centre. Let's be fair. Yeah. Okay, 41. So that weighs 41 grams. Um, and that's technically a, a, it's got more more on it, more metal. Uh, you know, it, it, this is a locker. This one isn't locking. So I would have thought that would have weighed less. But there you go. This this you know the the inconsistency of uh, uh, of these. I, I don't understand why that is, but there you go. That's just brief snippet of <laughs> what I think. So the tuners went on pretty much without a hitch. Um, as I suspected, some of the uh, screw holes were a little bit bigger than they needed to be, so um, we filled those before we screwed it back up. So... Um, just been working on the board, but anyway, let's have a look. Let's have a look here. What's going on here? Yeah. Um, yeah. What can I say? So what we'll do is we'll have to put a dowel in that. Glue a dowel in that. What's the other one like? That was not too bad. Yeah, we'll put a dowel in this one as well. Paint it, hide it. Yeah, so uh, so on to the next thing, which is the uh, strap lock. So we're going to put the uh, the Resimax in. It's light, it's kind of alley. Um, the other great, I'll show you this really great thing about this, all right? Because there's no obvious locking system on it, but it does lock. Uh, uh, but there's no obvious way of doing it. And I'll show you in a sec. So basically. Um, I've already taken one stud out and put the new stud in. In case you don't know how to take the stud out, you get like a screw, a long screw like this, and you screw it into the old stud. Until it won't screw anymore. And then you get a, an Allen key or, or a, a whatever it is, the, whatever screw you've got. And you keep turning and you will see that the stud Will come out 
maybe this is not the best position from the camera but you can get get what I'm at nice and easy out comes the stud so uh, the new stud on the Resimax I know it's it's just it's the same size it's the same size but the knurled bit is a little bit wider which is cool which means we're going to get a really nice it's going to get a nice snug fit I'm going to tap that with my tapometer very lightly S small taps nice and easy does it nice and easy does it and you can hear when it's all the way down because the kind of sound changes but there you go they're both in. This is the cool bit, right? So, yeah, this is the put the Resimax, Resimax kind of studs in. That isn't the Resimax stud. This is the wrong one. That goes in like that. And this one goes in like that. This is the cool bit, right? You're ready for this. This is so cool. Oh, I'm so excited I can't I can't I can't screw this in know that feeling right it's alley it's much lighter than the, much lighter than the, the previous one apparently it's, it's gonna give you loads more loads more harmonics and sustain and, and all the other stuff I remember that uh, when I fitted on my Les Paul it was quite a snug fit too. Um, it's going on perfectly nice. It's it's just a real snug fit. I don't know why they're so snug, um, but I do recall this when I did this on the last guitar I did. But that's going down. But that's what you want. You want a snug fit. It ain't coming off. So yeah. But anyway, so it's magnetically sticking, <laughs> and it'll come off as well. You want to take it off yeah don't that look good so all that remains on this guitar now is uh, to string it up um, do a setup and play it okay so before I do the intonation um, I just wanted to get like the string height more or less where I, can't, where I kind of think it should be more or less uh, I'll come back to that the string height in a bit I'll probably tweak that again later so um, height's done the other thing is I noticed that uh, there's a little bit more relief in the neck that than, than is required so I'm going to try and take a bit of relief out of the neck as much as I can really because the more relief I can take out I mean obviously I need a little bit to stop the strings from buzzing but more if I can because it, it makes it a lot of uh, uh, the guitar a lot easier to play and a lot faster in, in this section here, especially on a Les Paul. Um, so yeah, I'm going to do that next. Um, the, um, there's all sorts of tools you can get to adjust your nut. I, I use this because it's my preferred method. Uh, it's, it's just an easy way of getting it. Sometimes you can't get the nut like this, but if I can, I'll, I'll use this 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 system, uh, which is just from a socket set. Really, I mean you can use. Uh, you can use these. Um, I've got these. Um, it just uh, the, <laughs> the one that fits this actually fell down the back of my uh, back down the back of my um, workshop, uh, my my uh, my work table. So um, I can't be bothered to retrieve it. So anyway, using this one, and I'm going to tweak the neck. I'm going to do all that. Uh, when I've done that, I'm going to do the intonation. Um, the way I do the neck relief is kind of well. Okay, this is how I do it, right? I don't measure anything or do anything like that. I don't do any of that stuff. Apart from what I do is uh, I do measure it with this. I put it over the neck and I just have a look to see how much relief there is there by looking at the gap underneath, right? You've probably seen all that before. That's what I do. And what I do is I try and get the neck, believe it or not, as straight as I possibly can until it starts buzzing and making all sorts of weird noises that it shouldn't do. Then I tweak it back a little bit and play it. Play the whole guitar up and down the neck to make sure every, every note sounds pretty much there when I get to the point where I feel that I've got the best action absolutely possible ie the straight straightest neck I possibly can without the next buzzing out then that's it I'm done that's how I do that 
I don't measure anything or any of that kind of stuff. I, I, I do it all by sight, feel, and, and ears. And I've got to be honest with you, 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 you're surprised that every guitar is different. Every guitar is different. So measurements, when you get specs from, from websites and stuff like that, they mean nothing. Um, you've got to do this by ear, by hand, by eye, if you want to do it properly. Now, the, the other thing is a guitar player that owns this guitar might come along and just go, no, that's, that's, that doesn't feel right for me. Uh, and obviously you'll have to change it. But at least the starting point that you've got, uh, where you know it's, it's optimum, uh, it's a good place to start, even if it's not right for the customer. Some customers like them strings to rattle more. Some do. Intonation. So, there's our tuner. We need a tuner. We plug it into the tuner. And basically, we play the note. And we tune this guitar to whatever tuning the customer wants this guitar tuned to, which, in this case, this string is C sharp, which we got it. Then, we play the 12th octave and we can see that it's a little bit sharp not a lot just a little bit sharp now if it's a little bit sharp what we need to do is screw this screw here so this saddle moves that way I have lowered this um, pickup here so we can get at it without scratching the pickup up Sometimes I just put a cloth underneath there, but in this case, just to show you, I'm not going to do that because it was just all gets in the way. And we just turn this screw anti-clockwise, anti and it goes back a little bit. Sorry, I wasn't. I was looking at what I was doing. So we get back a bit, and then. We tune it again. Check the twelfth the twelfth fret. It's still a little a tad sharp, so we'll go just a little bit more. I can't see what I'm doing, this is kind of impossible. Right, anti-clockwise. These are quite fine um, quite fine screws on here as well, um, which is a great thing, because you can get really accurate. So we retune it. Don't forget to retune it. It's really hard with one hand, but I'm doing it. So if I can do this with one hand, you can do it. Hang on. Bang on! Or we're a little bit, a little bit flat now, so I should just bring that back. Clockwise, just a tad, just a couple of turns, that should be it. Hang on. Tune it. There we go, we're bang on. Okay, I did that one handed. Uh, so if I can do it one-handed, you can do it too. So that's that simple, intonation. The guitar is finished. All the upgrades done. I'm not going to go over what we've just done to it because you've just watched the video. Unless you fast forward to the end. In which case, uh, uh, may I say that you've missed all the good bits. Anyway, so uh, let's just uh, play it out. Um, we'll play this video out um, with this guitar. See what it sounds like. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm really interested to hear what this um, this pickup sounds like. Well, let's go. Let's have a go. I've just got it on a kind of just a kind of black star kind of crunch, really. Um, nothing special, nothing high gain. It's just a crunch channel. Just see how this sounds. We'll, we'll just change the sounds a bit and try some clean and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> Obviously, it's C drop C sharp tuning, so obviously it's going to sound a lot beefier because of that. But it's got this uh, pickup in which um, I'm surprised actually. This pickup, I'm quite surprised. I expect it to be a bit more, I don't know, 
uh, rough around the edges, a bit more, I don't know, just a bit more ear piercing, but it's not. It's quite a very well balanced pickup. Uh, I'm quite impressed with it. Um, not impressed with the price so much, but I'm impressed with the sound that comes out of it. It sounds like a really nice, it's really nice, well rounded uh, pickup. So there's a lot of thought uh, and probably a, quite a bit of R&D gone into it. <laughs> very balanced sounding pickup so yeah I'm quite impressed with that um, let's try something a little bit um, a little bit harder a little bit more gain perhaps <laughs> Yeah, cool. Sounds great. Uh, let's try a bit clean. Well, I don't have clean. I have this kind of like dirty clean. That's... Between, I just realised in between it's it's kind of like a, 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 a there's a phase issue so you get this kind of phase issue customer hasn't told me what to do about that so I don't know I'll have to see what happens there. I like it Peter Green territory. Anyway, great pickup. Really like it. I'm actually quite impressed with it. Yes, very well rounded. And I think this 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 is the ceramic one as well. This is a ceramic nail bomb. So I was expecting it to be more. I don't know. More ear piercing. More more race. I don't expect. I was just expecting it to be more in your face. The treble to bite a lot harder than it does. I was expecting that, but. Uh, maybe it's because of the guitar it's I don't know, but uh, it's a good match. It sounds really good and um, that concludes this video Hey, if you like this video and you want to see some more press the subscribe button and the bell um, Put some comments in the bottom. Give me a thumbs up and I'll catch you later